Welcome to Wild Breakaway with Wes Walls. I'm Audra Martin. It was just a few nights ago the Minnesota Wild punched their ticket to the postseason for the sixth straight year. Tonight, unfortunately, they helped another team do exactly the same. The Anaheim Ducks with a 3-1 to one win tonight in Anaheim means they are also headed to the postseason. The Minnesota Wild couldn't just keep the, the momentum going after what was a solid first period. The rest of the way out, still a good showing, though, from that young defense. I thought so, too. I mean, going into this game, because uh, Anaheim is so good defensively, um, and don't give up a whole lot of scoring chances. We knew this was going to be a one-goal game, and that's the way it ended up. Obviously, it was a 3-1 because they got an empty netter. But um, I thought overall the Minnesota Wild play really, really well defensively. Um, and, and this has been the case now for the Minnesota Wild here now for the last 15, 20 games. They have buckled down defensively. Uh, and obviously now with Ryan Suter out of the lineup, um, going into the playoffs here in about a week or so, this is the way this team has to to. to to uh, defend if they want to have any chance to win. They were very solid tonight, and I thought it was an outstanding effort, considering from the Minnesota Wild, they really had zero to play for. Well, here's a look at tonight's final stats. Close one. When it comes to shots, Ryan Miller turning away 25 of 26 shots from the Minnesota Wild. They go one for three on the power play tonight, but how about the penalty kill? It's now a season-best seven-game streak where they've been absolutely perfect, killing off 20 consecutive penalties. But again, that young defense stepping up in the absence of Jared Spurgeon and Ryan Suter, especially Carson Soucy. I thought Soucy played really well. Yeah. You know, he played with a, a lot of poise, and again, he—I um, know it was at the end, but he uh, still uh, had a, a you know a penalty called against him on a rush. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought he's getting better every game. So here's a look at what's next. The final two games of the regular season. It's a set of back-to-backs tomorrow for the Minnesota Wild game two. Means it's time to take on the Kings. And then the final game of the season Saturday night against the San Jose Sharks. But tomorrow against the Kings, a team that clinched a spot in the postseason tonight as well. But they still have something to play for. They are hoping to get home ice advantage. So the Minnesota Wild know they're going to come out very anxious and give it all they got. Home ice advantage is very important in the playoffs. Uh, coaches, great coach, all the great coaches in the National Hockey League, they get last change. They get to put the players on the ice that they want. Um, anytime you think of the LA Kings, the first thing that comes to mind for me is big forwards. Uh, uh, Pearson, Toffoli, Dustin Brown, Kopitar, uh, Jeff Carter, 6'4", 230 pounds, I could skate. So a great test again for the Minnesota Wild again. Their last back-to-back of, back, back back of the season, this is the 17th uh, they've had, and I think s s eight or nine here over the last, uh, it feels like four weeks that they've had so many back-to-back. -back. So a great challenge uh, for the Minnesota Wild. And um, I love the way Bruce Boudreau handled the bench here today. Uh, they didn't have anybody play really 18, 19, 20 minutes. Uh, you know, a lot of guys got a chance to spread the wealth. And uh, hopefully that happens again tomorrow. And tomorrow will be Alex Stalock between the pipes. Yep. We'll see if he can keep the Kings out of the back of the net. We will look forward to seeing you again late night tomorrow night as they take on the Kings. Until then, for West Walls, I'm Audra Martin. Thanks for joining us tonight on Wild Breakaway.